If you're having trouble downloading GarageBand to your Mac, this is the video for you. I'll go over some quick fixes that might just get you up and running right away, and cover some more in-depth solutions that those with older, unsupported Macs in particular might find really useful. The latest version of GarageBand, meaning the only version available for download from the Mac App Store, is at the time of making this video only available to users who are running macOS 13.5 and above. So if you haven't updated to macOS Ventura and your machine is capable of it, doing so will allow you to download GarageBand from the Mac App Store. Which sounds really straightforward, and it is, unless you have a Mac that is too old to install the latest version of macOS. If you have a machine older than the models displayed on screen now, then unfortunately you won't have access to macOS Ventura or the latest version of GarageBand. At least not officially, but more on that a bit later on. If you don't have GarageBand installed and can't download it via the Mac App Store, either because you don't want to update to macOS Ventura or your Mac is too old to update, but you have had it downloaded and installed at some point using the iCloud account you're signed into your Mac with, open the Mac App Store, click on your face or whatever avatar you've chosen. It's in the bottom left of the window for me. It may be somewhere else for you if you're running an older version of macOS. Then scroll through this list of previously purchased apps until you find GarageBand. Click to download it and the last available version that is compatible with your machine will be installed on your Mac. Easy peasy. If you have an older macOS Ventura incompatible Mac and don't have any purchase history linked to your iCloud account, you're probably wondering how you can download an older version of GarageBand that works with your machine, right? Like there must be a page or link on Apple's website that will allow new Apple users with older Macs to download the newest version that their machine can handle, right? No, no there isn't. It is 2024 and I have no idea why Apple are still effectively blocking new users with older Macs from downloading older versions of GarageBand from the Mac App Store. Especially as on iOS, when you go to GarageBand's iOS App Store listing on an older device and hit download, you're told that the newest version isn't supported, but asked if you'd like to download the latest version that your iOS device supports. Not so on Mac, it's bizarre, honestly. So that's your definitive official answer. It can't be done. Unofficially though, there are a few ways around this. Back when I created my first video on this topic, an absolute legend by the name of Andrew left a really helpful comment on the GarageBand Guide website that uncovered a way for those who hadn't previously downloaded GarageBand to install it on their older Mac models. That comment reads as follows. I'm running macOS 10.12.6. I don't have GarageBand associated with my Apple ID, so the App Store wouldn't allow me to download it. I thought I was screwed, but I actually figured out a way. My wife has a new Mac Pro. I had her create a second user profile for me and signed in with my Apple ID. Since it's a newer machine, it had GarageBand already installed. I simply deleted it, then downloaded it again using my Apple ID. That's it, I logged back into the old machine and went to the App Store. GarageBand is now associated with my Apple ID. When I clicked install, it gave me the message indicating it will download an older compatible version. Today, June 20th, 2022, I was able to install an old version of GarageBand on a machine running macOS Sierra 10.12.6 with an Apple ID that didn't previously have any version of GarageBand associated with it. And it actually works. This is an absolutely brilliant workaround and works like a charm today. If you only have access to an older Mac, but know someone who has previously downloaded GarageBand and has it linked to their Apple ID, 
and who'll trust you enough to share it with you. You can sign into your machine with their Apple ID, head to the App Store and download GarageBand that way. Here's a step by step on how that method works. This is my early 2015 MacBook Pro. At 9 years old, it isn't compatible with macOS Ventura. I've set up a brand new user on the machine, Mr. I Want GarageBand. If I head to the Mac App Store, you'll see that when I tried to download GarageBand, I met with this message. What I want to do next then is sign into the Mac App Store using an iCloud account that has already downloaded GarageBand. In this case, my own iCloud account. Note that the person whose iCloud account you're signing in with will get a security notification, and if they have two-factor authentication set up, you'll be asked to enter a code that will appear on one of their Apple devices. Once you've signed in, head back to GarageBand's Mac App Store page, and you should see this cloud download icon instead of the generic Get button. When you click to download, this message will pop up, letting you know that while the latest version of GarageBand isn't available, the last version compatible with your machine and operating system is. Hit download and you'll be off to the races. Make sure to sign out of the other person's iCloud account once you're done. But what if you don't know anyone who has or is willing to share their Apple ID info with you? Well, there is an unofficial way to install macOS Ventura on older Macs that Apple no longer supports using the OpenCore Legacy Patcher. In a nutshell, OpenCore allows macOS to run on unsupported Mac devices, particularly those that Apple has officially declared obsolete and that no longer receive official macOS updates. It's completely legal as long as you're installing macOS on an Apple device and it's relatively straightforward to get set up with. There is full documentation on how to use the OpenCore Legacy Patcher on github.com and I'll link to a full step-by-step -step guide video on how to get set up down below the like button. I can't believe that Apple still haven't sorted this out, man. It's ridiculous. Let me know your thoughts down below and if you found this video helpful, give that like button a good hard slap on your way past. I really appreciate it. And for more info on how to get going with GarageBand on Mac, watch this next.